I wanted to share <clears throat> lately when I share I've ended up having two titles when I do the blog and uh, my original title was another person another person but then my secondary title is how do you relate to the person within you how do you relate to the person within you and so um, <clears throat> I'll read some scriptures we're all so familiar with Colossians 1 verse uh, 25 through 27 whereof I am made a minister according to the dispensation of God which is given to me for you to fulfill the word of God even the mystery which hath been hid from ages and from generations but now is made manifest in his saints to whom God would make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles which is Christ in you the hope of glory and so I want to talk about this person, this another, another person, but this person who dwells within us. And much of my sharing all the time, uh, even when it feels like I'm trying to correct or something, I don't know, you know, my heart is that we are able to give back to the Lord we we take so much and to be able to give back and to touch his heart and to bless him and so this is one of the again the theme behind what i'm sharing is this desire that we relate more in a way that it would bless him the one that lives in us, Jesus Christ, that lives within us. So, <clears throat> excuse me. So we know that, you know, our hope is not in ourselves. And really, according to Colossians 1.27, our hope is not even in Christ in heaven. Our hope is Christ in us. That's what it says that this is Christ in you is the hope. And so I want to relate <clears throat> based on that. And, um, you know, I've often thought that we will be judged uh, by how we treat, how we relate to that person that is in us, that person that's in us. So I want to kind of give you like a parable a uh, little story uh, that I made up, and it relates to Christ in you or Christ in me. And and it's there's going to be a lot of questions <clears throat> that I'll I'll be throwing out. Um, so I will be asking a lot of questions, and and you don't need to answer them obviously through here, just within yourself. But I would like for you to try to answer the questions. And to do it, to answer those questions in light of how do you relate within the person that is within you. And so, so here's the, the parable, the story that I want to use to, to sort of uh, uh, set the stage for this. Um, what if, and so there's going to be a lot of what ifs, that's a question. What if you had a medical condition uh, and it would soon end your life? What if there was only one way to keep you alive? You must have, for that to take place, you must have a certain kind of surgery, okay? And that surgery would involve putting another person inside of you. Now, we're talking about Christ in you, the hope of glory. But we're also using this kind of as a story of, well, how would we relate if we had 
another person inside of us, which we do. It's Christ. Um, and and this uh, this uh, <clears throat> medical procedure, this surgery, uh, it wouldn't be putting them bodily in you. It would be the being of that person inside of you, but it'd be a person nonetheless. And you would you could converse mentally with that person if you had that kind of surgery. Uh, you could get to know them and uh, he could get or she could get to know you. Um, uh, they would be connected to your systems. In other words, this person that you would have the surgery and put in you, they would be connected to your systems. They're, you know, uh, they would, in other words, like they would be able to know your thoughts and to know your fears and to, you know, uh, know your outward actions and inward motives, all these different things, and really would basically be able to know everything. And before you had the surgery, only you know the, knew those things. But after the surgery, this person that is keeping you alive uh, also knows those things. And so this person who is in this condition decides to go ahead, even though it seems strange, to go ahead and get the surgery and to take it anyway. Uh, and why? Well, I wrote down, regardless of this other person being moment by moment in your inward parts, you would do so because you only had a short time to live, and this person was saving your life by putting this other person in you. So, once the surgery was done, and you returned back to your routines, your, your daily routines of life, what degree or to what degree would you be mindful of that person that was inside of you. Once you, the, once you healed up from the surgery and everything, what, to what degree would you be mindful of that person within you? Would you treat, uh, treat them the same way you did your family? In other words, this person that was in there, would you treat them the same way you would, would you treat the inward person the same way you would treat your family? Those those who are outside of you? Would the inside be as prominent as the outside? In other words, would you go back to being an outside person who related only to what was out here? Or would you be also very much aware of the inside person? Because they lived inside of there. And because they lived, they gave you life so that you could live. Um, would, your, would your every waking moment be mindful that you had another person? This is where I got the title, another person. Would your every waking moment be mindful that you had another person in you? Um, would you ever try to hide things? from this inward person? Or would you ever ignore their existence? Now think of this if this was an actual situation and not some spiritual thing. And you actually had a surgery and this was the only hope for you to stay alive or you would just die. And you would put them in, in you. But would you would there, that fact that you're alive now just pass away in your mind and now you sort of ignore their existence? Would you ignore them for, say, would you ignore them for long periods of time? I mean, maybe even for months without really, you know, communing with somebody that's put inside of you. Would you ever talk to that person mentally, but cut them off 
the moment you had a thought in another direction. In other words, you're talking to that person that's in you and you're supposedly communing or, you know, and then all of a sudden you have another thought and you just cut off, you just cut them off and you go, you know, um, uh, you know, another thought in another direction or, you know, it could be a phone call or, or laundry or kids or TV, computer, busyness. Or, or if you were talking as, because remember, you had the ability to converse between them, to know them and them know you. <clears throat> um, and if you were talking to them and another person walked up, and, or every time another person walked up, you cut that person off. The, you cut the inside person off for the outside person or you cut the inside person off for the external things the way that you used to live and then i was thinking as i was writing this i was thinking of thankfulness um, uh, how many times in how many ways in a month would you stop everything and thank that person knowing if I'd never had this surgery, I wouldn't even be alive. My, my time would have already expired and that I would constantly be thankful to this person that's, that, that the surgery put inside of me. Um, would you stop everything and just thank them? And then... Um, you know, I put, would you, would you thank him for every breath? Um, would you thank him for every heartbeat? Um, for every activity that you experience that you wouldn't have experienced before? Because your life has been blessed by this inward person? Um, or... Would you, even after having the surgery, even after um, your life being extended, would you only talk to that person when you needed something? Like if you needed something, then, then I, you know, I'll, oh, hey, it's almost like calling them up except they're on the inside. And they're right there and they know your thoughts and you could know their thoughts. And, and I thought, would you, would you let that person talk more than you talk? <laughs> you know, it's like you have somebody in there and you just talk all the time because you, you were used to it being just you. And then you got this surgery and you've got this uh, another person in there. Would you let them talk? And w if you did, would you let them talk more than you? Um, would you take this relationship for granted? After a while, you just got used to the fact that they're there and you took it for granted in this way that you went back to your external friends and family and relationships and you shut down the new relationship of another person that came into your life only because you were not going to live you were going to die Would you seek to know how this arrangement was working for them? I mean, you know, imagine if that there was a real situation like that and you really, you know, there really was a surgery and there really was another person. Would you seek to know how this arrangement was working for them? Would you say, are you okay with being in me, uh, you saved my life by this surgery. 
Are you okay with being in me? And and how can I how can I better um, how can I better uh, facilitate help you to be more comfortable? How can I better uh, make you happy in me? What things do I do that are hurtful or that you don't understand or things like that? Would you talk to that person just finding out, is, is this working out for you? And then how often would you talk to others about that person, the person in you? You would talk to the outward people about the inward person that was in you uh, uh, because your life was so different since the surgery. You know, it's like I was I was dead. I mean, I wasn't dead yet, but I was dead. I was, I was already sealed. There was only one way. And 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 I want to tell you about this person that lives in me and that that if they didn't volunteer, if they didn't put themselves in a such a strange relationship, I would have no life. I would not have met you as my friend. I would not have gotten to spend time with my children or grandchildren or grow up and, you know, and get married or or whatever. And to and to really recognize what that surgery had done in your life. And so um, my final question is, with this surgery and this person that was put inside of you, would you be the preeminent person or would they? Would they be a secondary person and you preeminent all the time? Or would you defer, or at least defer, you know, you could almost say at least 50-50, you know. And so I just want to close with, um, with uh, I started with Colossians, you know, 127 that we know so well, Christ in you, the hope of glory. And I want to close with another one that's so familiar, Galatians 2.20. Both of these, speaking of another person that has come into us that we didn't have before and that we would have died if Christ hadn't come into our lives but not just stayed on a throne. That's what I said. Christ, you know, our hope is not that Jesus died on a cross 2,000 years ago, not, not just that. It's not that Jesus is our hope because he's in heaven, but Christ in you is the hope. And, and Paul addresses this part too. We know it. We all know it. I I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith that I was crucified and Christ now lives in me by the faith of the Son of God who loved me who gave himself for me. So I know that this is a hypothetical, silly story, but it didn't come out of, out of some fairy tale idea for me. It came to me as a real thought. If, if that had happened to us with a surgery, we might be a little different, but it has happened to us. And there is a person 
And his name is Jesus Christ. And he's the slaughtered lamb meant to be first on the throne of our hearts. And so that so that we would let him live, that we would relate to him as if there was someone really in us. And so I ask you at the very beginning, if you would, you know, just try to answer those questions in your heart. And, and then if we could just pray. I, I so long for Jesus who is in every one of us to be able to uh, be loved, be befriended, be thought of, instead of us putting it in another box, wrapping it in a different box called Christianity, and just living as a Christian, instead of as one who had a had him put on the inside of us all the time, every day, every night. So let's pray. Father, I just uh, thank you for these thoughts and that your spirit could um, not convict us or, eat or condemn us, but if we could just think, think it through for a little and we could realize that there is another person inside of us always and that maybe we ignore them the vast portion of our day, the vast portion of our week, maybe even months on end, we, we make no reference to him. We just live our portion of the life. And so I ask you to help us, not in condemnation, but in deep love for you, Jesus, for you who loved us and gave yourself for us, that we could give that back, that we could think of, on, think of these things, that we could think upon you and we could rejoice in the fact that you have come inside of us. Father, I thank you for these that love you so much and that they take the time to be with you in, on this uh, blog and, and um, fire ministries. And I pray your richest blessings and your great move of the Spirit who will, who will unveil the one who inhabits us. I ask it, Father, sincerely and deeply, in his name and for his sake. Amen. Amen. So good to be with you again, always. Always. Thank you for letting me share. God bless you.